your Bibles. Let's go ahead and open those up today. We're in Ephesians. We finished the book of Galatians in our series, General Electric Power Company. We're up to the book of Ephesians. And if Galatians was the general overview, grace, uh, not trying to f continue in the flesh what God started in the spirit, Ephesians is the electric, the electricity. We're going to see this phrase, in Christ or in him, over and over again. And we're going to look at that together. So we begin Ephesians chapter 1. It says, Paul... An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And I love this. You know, in our modern day, when we write a letter, and that's what these are. These are letters that Paul was writing to churches that he had either started or seriously strengthened. And he's bringing some correction, some encouragement. Uh, generally in us, we have to read all the way through the end of the letter to see sincerely so-and-so. You know, love so-and-so. Take care so-and-so. Right? Uh, but, but in Paul's day, they'd say it right at the beginning. And notice his name is Paul. Uh, before he was saved by Jesus, his name was Saul of Tarsus. Saul, his name meant requested one. He was famous. He was revered. But now as he's been changed by Jesus, remember his testimony, he's on the road to Damascus. He's on his way to persecute Christians. Jesus himself knocks Paul off his high horse, saves him, and he changes his name from Saul, requested one, to Paul, which means little. Listen, uh, it's very important as followers of Christ that we're little in our own eyes. You know, big in God's eyes, but little in our own eyes and not looking to, to garner the popularity the world gives. And Paul says, that's my name. I'm just little, but I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. You know, for Paul, by the will of God, he was called to be an apostle, to go out and plant churches and establish works of God, spread the word. But, but what are you by the will of God? You know, are, are you, you know, is it Liz, a school teacher, by the will of God? That's perfect. Is it uh, Jim, a mechanic, by the will of God? That's great. What are you by God's will? You know, it's important that we're walking in the will of God and not our own. To the saints, he says here, who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, this is a big deal here. We, we see here, Paul shows us, number one, to the saints. You know, there's only two categories of people, according to the great J. Vernon McGee, Bible teacher. He says there's only two groups of people, and he says it with his patented southern accent. He says they're the saints, and then there's the ain'ts. You know, if you think of a saint as a little statue that you pray to, uh, that's not in the Bible. The Bible says a saint is someone who has been made right with God through the finished work of the cross, the blood of Jesus, by simply believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and being saved. That's a saint. An ain't is anybody who ain't saved, right? Anybody who has said, I'm going to have my self-righteousness, I'm going to heaven because of my religion, or I don't really care, I'm an atheist, well, then you're still an ain't. But for Paul, he's writing to the church in Ephesus, and he says to the saints who are and they're in two places. They're in Ephesus, and they're in Christ Jesus. You and I are the same. We're in New York, maybe in New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania. Maybe you're in Florida. You're in Africa. You're in, you're in Latin America. You're in California, which is probably the worst of them all, right? You're, you're physically somewhere in the world, right? We're in this world, but we should not be of this world. In Ephesus, but also in Christ Jesus, that's a big one there, folks. In Christ Jesus. You know, when God the Father sees you, he doesn't see you, doesn't see all your sin. He sees you clothed in the righteousness of Christ. We are in Christ Jesus. In Christ. We're in him. Paul's going to really unravel that for us in this, in this book. Grace to you. So, Kedis, charisma, unearned, undeserved favor, and peace. Irene is the Greek word, to set at one again. You know, you can be at peace with God, but not have the peace of God. God wants us to have both, to be at peace with him through Jesus, but then also to have the peace of God that Paul says surpasses all understanding. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're just getting started. We're in Christ Jesus. We're saints, and I pray you'd walk that out today. Father, bless your people. May the electricity of your spirit flow through them even now in Jesus' name. Amen.